All right, good deal, good deal. We appreciate you guys uh, being here. Uh, if you're a moderator, please do not click the slides. So, again, okay. All right, everybody can hear us? Good, well, we'll go ahead and get started. We appreciate everybody taking the time to join us today. We've got a very exciting event. Looks like we've got a great crowd in the room. I know we've still got uh, people that will be tuning in shortly, but this is uh, Morgan Busby with TradingPub.com, and we're very excited to host this very exciting trading um, event. We've got three outstanding guests lined up for you. Real quick, before we get started, uh, we'll run through a brief risk disclaimer, kind of tell you a little bit about today's event, a little bit about what we do. I know you definitely didn't come to hear me talk, so I'll be very brief. But uh, with any type of trading, you know, there's risk involved, and especially when you start talking about futures and options strategies and using leverage, it's very important that you understand the risk. Another thing just to point out, all the education here is strictly education. It's not any kind of trade recommendations that we're sharing with you today, but just sharing with you from education from three top traders. The mission of the Trading Pub is to provide a place for our patrons where they can hang out with some of the top traders in the industry. Pub is the place to receive quality education, all while interacting with traders and investors who are just like you. Uh, throughout the Trading Pub, our goal is to connect you guys to top traders in the industry. We've got three outstanding traders here today. We want you to enjoy your time here. If you've been to any of our events before, you know they're very laid back. It's all about free trading education, and uh, we just want you to enjoy that. And for some reason, if what the speakers are talking about today is not for you, all we ask is just that you log out and go and enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, one other thing we try to do at Trading Pub, uh, obviously we want to trade well. We also want to do good. And we try to donate, uh, or we donate any 10% of any revenues generated from Trading Pub to charities focused on inner city revitalization and workforce development. If you want to stay up to date with us, our website is tradingpub.com. For those of you that are in the Twitter sphere, it's twittercom tradingpub and then facebookcom tradingpub. Uh, we put our daily videos and copies of these recordings on those sites. So again, like I said, the rules of the road. Uh, if you're going to be here, don't be the guy on the left. You know, be here to learn. We've got three guys with a lot of experience in these markets that are taking time out of their busy day to share with you. And so again, it's important. If you're going to be here, be cool. You know, you want to be the guy on the right. So what I'd like to do is just go through a quick uh, run through of the three speakers today. Our first speaker will be Tom Busby of Diversified Trading Institute. Uh, the three things that Tom's going to cover, he's going to talk about the crash of 1987 and what it means today. He'll talk about the election and your money, and then also seasonal trends through the end of the year and the bond market and the Japanese yen. Uh, our next guest, the second speaker, will be Guy Adami. He's going to give his market outlook for the fourth quarter and talk about psychology of trading and then his guidelines for identifying value in stocks. And again, Guy is a uh, member of CNBC trading show Fast Money and a contributor of Option Monster and Trade Monster. We've got Dr. Barry Burns as our third speaker today. Uh, Barry Burns is going to cover technical analysis of time over price, why you're trading with impaired vision and how to change that, and then the hidden power that all markets have. One thing that uh, I will tell you, we are recording this event. We'll post a copy of the recording on our website under the free education tab. We should have a copy of that recorded, recording posted uh, by this afternoon. So at this time, I'm going to turn things over to our first speaker, is Tom, and each speaker gets 25 minutes. So we'll put a timer up there so you guys can keep track of that. I'm going to get his slides loaded. And one thing to remember, if for some reason, if for, and I'll type this in, if for some reason you have an audio or visual problem, you can hit F5. So audio or visual problem, hit F5. So again, F5 on your keyboard. All right, Tom, at this time, I'll turn things over to you in the next 25 minutes. The Thank you, Morgan, and uh, thanks for inviting me here today. This is a special day in our family. Uh, Morgan's uh, first baby, Olivia's having a birthday today. So uh, he's all smiles, and uh, congratulations. Now, been doing this a long time, folks. I got 24 minutes to tell you about 30 plus years of trading. Can y'all hear me okay? Hey, I'm pretty loud, so when I see somebody say say that uh, 
I'm low, I always think. Not on my end. <laughs> so, uh, Morgan, I guess you got to adjust your computer or whatever to get you where you you want to. I'm I'm pretty loud anyway. Uh, I want to invite you know. I want to say thank you for being here. Everybody, type in where you're from. I like to know where people's uh, dialing in from when I start talking, and I'll get into this. We got some great speakers following me today. Guy and Barry are just really good, so I think I think uh, I, I think it's going to be a fun time. You got to have a little fun in trading, you know, every now and then to uh, make sure that you're doing what you're doing and doing it right. We're in a key time of the year. I always love October, November, and December, and I'll talk a little bit about that a little bit later, but let's get started as the clock is ticking. I think risk is so personal that everybody needs to stop and think uh, about their total account and then the trades they take inside that account to make sure you're in the game long enough to make sure. Hey, Greg, good seeing you here. Uh, there's our headquarters in Mobile, Alabama. We built that building in 2001, and uh, the, um, it's 10,000 square feet of uh, rock and sock em, learn to trade uh, activity going on all the time. We've got a class going on right now. Uh, in about 10 minutes, we'll be grilling out on the back porch. Filet is the uh, what we're putting on the grill, and so uh, after I finish talking, I get fed. A little bit about my story and how I got started in the market. So I was in the United States Air Force in uh, Madrid, Spain, stationed at Torrejon Air Force Base, and while I was there, we had a guy in our squadron that was trading commodities and uh, pork bellies of all things. And he was having a ball and got me interested. So I opened up an account. And uh, I didn't realize at the time I'd open up a stock account, not a futures account. And I bought a couple stocks. One was Pan American Airlines. wonder why. Involved in flying, right? And the other one was Eastern Airlines. So if you come to Mobile, you will get to see the stock certificates. They're on my wall to remind me how important education is. Uh, then I went to law school. While I was at law school, I transferred my account into Merrill. And I had a great broker that was education type broker, introduced me to options, learned to do it, got offered a job, went to work for Merrill, and thought I was a, uh, a very, I was very arrogant and very, very good during those first few years until 1987 came along, and that's when I realized what real education was about. Again, founded this company in 1996, and we've had a lot of wonderful experiences over the years. October 19, 1987, a watershed moment. I talk about this in my book. This was the day that I went broke, and I went broke because I was using Wall Street's ways, not the DTI ways, and I say that because uh, I had a lot of positions on in October 1987. I had plenty of money. I was young. A lot of nice things that went away on that day. Black Monday, I'll never forget it. I thought it was the worst thing that ever happened to me, but after all these years, this really was the best thing that happened to me because it taught me the importance of education and knowing how to make money. Sad day when I went home that night. A lot of cash. I actually ended up owing uh, or debit. You can't do that today uh, because of the high-powered technology. But at the end of the day, I actually went home having a debit balance of 88000 in my account. I'll never forget that number. That day, the Dow lost 22 percent. Is anybody is anybody here that remembers that day? Anybody remember remember what happened? How how the panic was out there? Jack, you were on the uh, Amex floor. It was crazy. You'd put stock orders in, and it, and you didn't know the answer of whether you were filled or not. 
until, uh, you know, three or four days later. Randy, you're a banker back then. What state are you from? Prudential Base had the red-headed chairman. Oh, it was, it was crazy. We really thought the financial system as we know it was broken and was never coming back. I remember thinking, wow. My mistake was not having the proper knowledge. I'd learned the Wall Street ways, and, this, and I don't want to step on anybody's toes. But you know what? I might as well, you know, I was buried in what what was called technical analysis at the time, and uh, and I remember uh, stochastics. I don't know if you use that tool or not. I actually learned it from George Lane, who invented it, and uh, it was it was pretty interesting um, how the stochastics looked like it couldn't go any lower, and it just kept falling. Uh, my position, I was long 100 S&P puts and short 1,000 S&P puts. The short position expired in November. The 1,000 I was long expired on that Friday prior to the crash on Monday. Bad timing? Yep, bad timing. Here's how I overcame it. I learned after about six years of beating myself up that you got to come into every day, and you have to come. You have to come into every day with a positive attitude. You have to look at the market and learn how to tape read. Anybody ever read the book "World's Greatest Stock Trader"? Anybody ever read that book "World's Greatest Stock Trader"? You ought to read it. When you leave this webinar today, go find it, read it, and learn things. Things in that it talks about Jesse Livermore and it talks about tape reading. And if you read that book, you might need that information as we go into this next year, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Part two of today's presentation is election. It's a big election. I really don't care who you're for, but I want to tell you there's two scenarios. There's two scenarios. Scenario one, if Obama wins, what will that do to the economy? Well, here's what I think. More of the same, and the problem is we can't stand more of the same in this economy. We can't stand what's going on, and the market's going to reflect it. The second one is Romney wins. I think if Romney wins, you're going to have a down also. Might start as early as March of this year. I think that uh, we've been in this bull since March of 2009. Historically, it's time for for the other side. I think you're going to see some down action next year in the market. You better be prepared to make your money to the short side. Here's what's happened: unemployment's up. Salaries are flat, and on top of that, the cost of living is rising. Who likes apples? Who likes apples? Just basic apples. Up 11%. Buying power for U.S. population, medium, hadn't had increased, and costs have increased tremendously. Health care, up 16%. You've got to figure out something, and this is what we had a big discussion about. You've got to figure out something to cover the rising cost. I remember the cost of gasoline when it was 30 cents to fill up uh, a tank. I don't know. What is a, here's a question for you. What does it cost to fill up a tank where you live right now? Yep, I've been around long enough to know that one thing has not changed throughout my life. I could go to a picture show, go to a hamburger joint, 
go to a movie, have popcorn for five bucks or less. Have you been to a concession stand at a theater lately? Oh, yeah, just rising costs. So you got to come up with something to offset those costs. That's the stock market. We're so lucky to be interested in it, and we're so lucky to have opportunities. I think that uh, if you take that knowledge and you learn from knowledge and really get good at it, you'll be able to, if you like bacon, they say it's not good for you. I like it. It's up 21% last year. Ground beef's up 19%. Hey, if you want to put a little salt on it, it's up 14%. Heaven forbid if you like butter. Look at this. I know a lot of us got kids in college. 19%. Textbooks 20. Have I made you sad yet? Well, guess what, folks? This is what you've got to overcome. If, let me tell you a little story. We had a guy that was very interested in getting trained by us. He didn't take any action. This is last May. Right now, he doesn't have enough money to take action because, because he spent all his money on living. Anyway, these are the kind of things you have to think about as a trader. Gasoline, national average, 376. Home prices are still down. All right, a little bit about DTI. It can give you an edge over rising costs. I do it all the time. Has anybody made any money during the presidential debates? Has anybody made any money at all? All right. In two sessions, we've traded the presidential debates. We've got one Monday night. We'll be live trading there. Next session will be Monday. I'll be trading live during that session Monday night. All right, let's talk about the Japanese yen. The Japanese yen's going a lot lower. Anybody here trade the yen? All right, I'm short the yen, and I'll tell you my initial target on the yen is 122. I've been waiting for this trade to set up. I think you got some money there in the Japanese yen. It's third most traded currency behind the dollar and the euro. The Japanese are getting very aggressive as they go outside of Japan and invest in other parts of the world. Their growth is going to come from that, and that yen is going to keep going down. It's a trend that you can get on. You don't have to you don't have to buy it one minute and sell it the next, but you can make some money in trends. If you don't want to trade commodities, you can go to a stock called FXY and play the options there as an alternative. Let's look at the yen where it's been. Open year at 131.50, the high is 131.92, that's a bearish signal. And now it's had a low of 119.80. It opened in 127.05. It's down this week. It's starting to move again, folks. It will get to 122 probably by the end of the year. So follow the end and remember this conversation. Every point it drops will be about $1,250 in your pocket. This is the break I'm talking about. Every, a lot of people think they know this market, but this is a perfect setup. What you're going to see tonight, about 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock, you're going to see this yen break the, all the support on this chart, and people are going to wake up. It's going to be a lot lower. I've been watching it. Might as well, you might as well benefit from that knowledge. That's what the week looks like when you break it down to a smaller chart. This 126 level, if it closes below that today, I'll go home short. So when I'm talking to people like you and I'm looking at how I can help you, I can help you two ways. Get short the yen, 
and be there Monday night and watch me trade the presidential debate. It'll be worth your time. It'll help offset your utilities and maybe some cost. How do I know? Because this is what I do. Talk about the, let's talk about the trade of the decade, folks. The trade of the decade. Treasury bonds are about to embark upon the biggest decline that you've seen. This is a short-term chart right here. When they break 146.09 and then they break 144, this is going to be the trade of the decade. 144. Remember that number. If you don't, if you don't remember anything else from this webinar I'm giving today, I want you to remember that if you get short the Treasury bonds and they're below 144, you're going to make a lot of money. There's a lot of ways to play it. You've got to have education to do it. Now let's talk about my outlook. We'll talk about the short-term outlook followed by a longer-term outlook. Write this down. The market's going to continue to go higher. You should see 1545 on the S&P by the end of November. That's the S&P. Use that as a way to judge where the market is. By that time, we'll know who the next president is. I've got two outlooks. Number one, if Obama wins, you're going to go into an extended decline that is going to last a long time. If Romney wins, you'll have a short-term pop that you should have a decline starting as early as March. In both cases, I believe 2013 is going to be negative, and you better learn how to trade the short side in both cases. All right, any questions? I could, let me tell you what you should have got out of this webinar. Number one, you better recognize cost are rising. I gave you a lot of examples. You better do some planning, folks, or you're going to be working in Walmart greeting people because it's going to get bad if you don't have a way to supplement the rising cost. I'm telling you it's coming. you got to get ready for that. Number two, I talked about two trades. There's a lot of trades I could tell you about. A lot of trades I could tell you about. I gave you the two best trades to make some money within the next seven days. One is treasury bonds. The other one's the Japanese yen. The timing of the yen is very easy. Watch the low of the day. If it closes below 126, it's trade time. I also told you that next Monday you can watch me trade live where I put my money where my mouth is. Now, you might think a lot of this is heresy or craziness or whatever. Do I have any students in here? Do I have anybody that know, knows what I'm talking about is true? You might share with the people that don't know that they're very, very, very happy to be in the right spot. I am a trader. Now, find out more about us. I got about five minutes. Cost you about three bucks to get a whole bunch of information. You get three things. You get our global market view and tape reading DVD. The tape reading DVD is going to help you in the short market. It's going to help you identify things like traveler stock right now. It's going to go up. TRV's a symbol. You might check that one out. Uh, the Trader's Edge DVDs talks you about how you enter orders, where to enter orders, timing to enter orders, okay? And then, of course, I didn't talk about my book because I described the first chapter of it, The Crash of 87, and what I did to change my life. We'll give you the audio version of that. Three bucks, 
And as a bonus, we're going to give you your subscription to Stock and Commodity Magazine. Okay. The yen is about 17 ticks off of breaking for today. If you want to sign up for my election party, let me give you my email, t.busby. And folks, there's a lot of money in this for the actual election night. We're training during the debates. There you go. Send me an email. I'll get you an invitation. There's no comparison, Rick. You know why? We're a global market that deals with futures, options, and stocks, and we trade in real time. We teach in real time. We're not a franchise operation. But they have some good stuff. Thank you, Ken, for saying that. Tell them about a stock you own that made you about 30,000 per, per, per thousand shares. Yeah, I do. I do. Cook, I do lose money. If I told you I didn't lose, I'd be lying to you. I lose. What distinguishes us from anybody else out there, we have a facility that trades online, trades in person, and then we, we're able to analyze it in real time. Like, for example, when I started talking about the yen today, it was 126.24. It's currently 126.15. I'm short. I'm going to add to the short below one. 26. When I started talking about bonds today, it was 146.2 to 146.13, and I've been short since 149. It breaks 144, the trade of the decade, folks. How would you like to take a margin requirement of $4,000 and ride that thing for about two or three years for $40,000? Yeah, uh, Ryan, hit that link right there. Hit that link right there. You got some good speakers on after me. Be patient. My goal today was to talk about rising costs and what you can do about it in the future. Yeah, our website is DTI Trader com. I see Andre is here. I see uh, a couple of the people are here from uh, DTI. Call 800. If you really want to know things, you can call 800-745-7444 if you don't want to wait for all the other stuff. Well, thank you, Gail. You've been to all the other schools. Hey, Denson Lipskin. He came to my school. Now he manages about $100 million in cash. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Thanks for letting me share a couple of my experiences with you and put out my warning. Because, folks, you've been told it's up to you to take action. All right, any more questions anybody got for me about the market per se? I'll answer it if you got any. Somebody asked me about gold going higher. Is it a correction right now if it goes above? 1761. I'm going to buy it. Stay out of oil. Stay out of oil. I got 15 seconds. If you got any, oh, Apple. Thank you for asking that one. Buy the January 645 call. Send me an email at t.busby99, t.busby99 at gmail.com. Folks, it's fun to be with you. Y'all have a great day. Women are buying shoes. Stay with DSW. Everybody have a good time. See you. Thanks, Morg.
All right, great. Thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate you being here, Tom, and always interesting to hear your thoughts. At this time, I'm going to turn things over to the next speaker, is uh, Guy Adami. Uh, Guy, if you can come on to a quick yes, audio test, you get your screen loaded.